Hello, Nana here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. We have arrived in Sarn. And in between episodes, I actually did a little bit of, uh, of running around. And I have all my resistances maxed out in Merciless. Also managed to even further increase my Chaos resistance. So let's uh, look. So I made a couple of changes. So this uh, the body armor I was working on for a while. I finally uh, managed to uh, just work with it a little bit and it turned out pretty darn well. Um, it actually has no resistances on it and that is because I now have a wand that is insanely good for resistances. 35 fire, 22 chaos resistance and I rolled another 19 a cold on top of that. So this is very good. Uh, this iron ring, 10 resist all, and 33 cold resist, so that filled up the cold resist hole I used to have. And on the other hand, fire and cold resistance, 15%, 14% resist all, and another 19% cold resist crafted on top. And this also boosts my energy uh, shield a bit. This one boosts my energy shield by 60 and I believe that's it. So 25 uh, energy resist, 60 energy resist. So my total now is almost 1700 points of energy resist on top of 2500 life. So I have nearly 4200 points of health. Life slash energy shield that enemies have to burn through all their way to kill me. Also, this is now patch 2.1.2. We have reached another minor patch milestone. And the biggest thing is microtransactions for the new chaos skills. So we have Contagion. It's uh, Arcane Blue. We have Essence Drain also in Arcane Blue. And Wither in Arcane Blue. In addition to that, Bladefall and Blade Vortex have also received pretty badass overhauls. I mean, Bladefall is, has a golden skin. Um, and Blade Vortex is a very nice red and black uh, look to it. That Well, I don't have a character that plays it, so I actually don't know how it looks in game. But it looks really nice on the video in the store. So, I figured I, I am playing with these skills. And I was actually curious about the microtransactions. The videos are a bit on the short side, so they don't really nicely show them off. But I figured, ah, let's, let's grab them anyway. I mean, these are nice to have. And this way, everybody who watches this video can see the new microtransactions as well. And I discovered that there's a nice ziggurat for the spell totem. So I also give that a visual upgrade. And one of the nice details of Wither is that the purple orbs that it used to cause are now blue orbs. Very bright arcane blue. So they really paid attention to the details. Hey, and there was a ghost over there. So these guys are freaking insanely quick. Quicker than usual. That's probably the ghost fault. Tormented Warlord. Yeah, okay. I didn't manage to kill you in time. That's too bad. Yeah. So, I've also uh, replaced my potions. So, my flasks. So, this one is a Divine Life Flask. Uh, 2600 life and curse removal. 2800 and bleeding removal. And I now have a hybrid flask that basically completely fills up my mana. And also removes shock. Um, I would have wanted it with uh, anti-frost, but yeah, this is good enough as well. I'll, uh, I'm, I'm starting to drown in these things, so I'll eventually craft one that is to my liking. But I think I, I rolled dozens of uh, hybrid flasks before getting this one, and I was uh, kind of done with it. So you know, sometimes you just settle for something that's good and. Getting rid of shock is also useful. I mean, shock stacks. Uh, oh, you take extra damage. That's usually not something you want. Black Maw. Uh, very dead Black Maw. Uh, okay. 
So we are on our way to Tolman. I know Tora is here. Uh, she's only level 4, so it might actually be useful to do a mission for her. Find the den, track the den. Okay. I uh, will see. If we encounter the den, then we will do it. And otherwise, it sucks to be Tora. Not really going out of my way to do it. So I've got Vorici and Elrion uh, both to level 6 now. So I have access to their currency exchange program, so to say. Which is... Uh, I think it's a 20% or 25% better deal than what you would normally get from vendors. So it's a... Uh, it, it's pretty nice if you need large quantities of... Um, I think AI Elrion gives access to the the currency that allows you to change the number of sockets on an item in exchange for uh, alteration orbs. I think it's 40 orbs for 32 of the other one. And Verici, you can trade in the socket number uh, currency for the one that rerolls the links between sockets. So. You can uh, basically go from alteration shards to something that's slightly more useful. Um, I mean, given that alteration shards are always uh, there, and the other things are not. Just wondering. Yeah, that's good. Just gonna look if there was a den or something nearby, but there wasn't. So, to add to Tora. Let's go look for Piety. I mean, maxed resistances is actually that's uh, very useful to have given that piety is going to be in this uh, in act 3 dominus is going to be in act 3 and the mapping device is in act 3 getting my resistances fixed felt like a very good idea oh bone spire i'm not a big fan as you well know So let's use the, the totem as a uh, as a scout. Here, draw some attention. Okay. I believe there was a bone spider totem. Ah, there. Here, let me grab it. Right. So my idea of going for chaos orbs basically ends with I need more currency items and belts to exchange so I'm actually gonna just leave all the, the larger sized uh, rares behind as I did before just so they won't clutter up my inventory because I currently have a full stash tab with uh, weapons and other stuff that you hold in your hands uh, shields bows staves etc and another one completely full with with all sorts of assorted armor and I think I have a grand total of two belts, two rings, and zero amulets. So that kind of shows where the shortage is of things. So, you know, I can just uh, pick up the smaller weapons and such and just sell them again for alteration orbs, uh, shards, or orbs, or whatever they eventually melt into. And I can just uh, focus on getting rings that are not resistance rings and keep those unidentified and uh, eventually sell them along with belts and amulets of the non... Well, actually all amulets because, you know, talismans don't really care about amulets. So there was no rare in sight, of course. Nope, of course not. You look very clueless. damage and it dropped the orb of augmentation very useful I mean I don't really have a lot of actually alterations I am drowning in augmentations are pretty useful they're a bit harder to get from recipes so sorry ghost for disparaging the loot you dropped it was actually pretty decent I really liked the, the purple on the 
the skills, but I have to say the blue, I like it. And especially with the, you know, the, it's almost like, like there's mana coming off of the edges of the circle. It, it really looks cool. Mm. Warm up for maps. Freezing disused furnace. Monsters deal 35% extra damage is cold. Area yields 12% more items. Well, this would be a, uh, a simple map, I suppose. So let's be careful, but run it anyway. It's level 64, so that's a, a pretty worthy challenge. I'm 69. Uh, Okay, let's do a, a clear of the area before we even touch that strong box. I want some moving space to uh, before getting myself into slightly less uh, less secure situations. Put it that way. Okay, so I did this thing. What does it do? It summons skeletons and contained items have a whole two percent of quality. So there's no freezing, there's no weird stuff. That's that good. Let's see, if we put this one over there, we hit this and we pour it out, and then we just shoot everyone into bits. Okay, custom leak girl. I don't think I have a lot of those yet, so I might as well grab it. Boom. So, uh, nothing actually worth grabbing, everything is 2%, but, yeah, it's only 2%. And I'm also drowning in quality items, with the exception of chisels. But I think you never actually have enough chisels. Sanctified mana flask. Well, I no longer use mana flask, so I can ignore that. I figured the, the Hallowed Hybrid would be a, a pretty decent alternative that would recharge my mana and help keep me safe. Uh, hello? Ah! There was, a, there was an area behind there. Okay, I think I've actually lost a summoner to this guy at some point, so I'm gonna be careful. Gratomium. It's a very, very tiny level also. Didn't even have a chance to uh, fully charge my skeletons. Yeah, have that one. I'll uh, just uh, dodge your attacks and uh, recharge my energy shield a little bit. Also, I lost my golem. He killed my golem. Basket case. I only managed to contagion him before wanting out, but that was enough. Two point arrow quiver. That looked insanely shiny. Oh wow. It's like a crystal asphyxia as rough. Extra accuracy, uh, attack speed, cold resistance, increased chill duration, uh, damage, 20% uh, of physical damage converted to cold, 10% chance to freeze, 40% reduced radius of curses, Curses on slain enemies are transferred to a nearby enemy. Oh wow, that's pretty cool with a curse on hit setup. Yeah, it could be pretty pretty sick. Then you hit one, and then if they die, they transfer. Let's see what uh, what file skill we get. Oh, there's more muppets. So there was not even enough corpses here to uh, get fast summoned. Ooh, and we all we need to do is uh, do a corrupted map, I believe. Uh, fast side areas, fast side areas. Yes, I think this is it. Yep, hey, any map uh, corrupted map created with a file device. And we get sacrifice at dawn. And then we can get back out to the crematorium. At this point, I'm not no longer sure if I actually have Sacrifice at Dawn or Dusk. I always confuse them. Uh, 
There was things in here. Yes, you. Die. Okay, there's a dead end over here. I'm, uh, I'm pleased with the with the new graphics. The change that bind six links body armor. Oh, that's not a bad, uh, not a bad one to get. We need eleven pieces of the card though. Also, piety is up here, and a ghost. Seriously, this is a dual ghost uh, map. On the other hand, it's gonna be the piety fight, so let's just take this one out here. Foul hatchet, wisdom scroll, go for piety. Could have actually maybe <laughs> charged it to piety, but nah, why increase risk when there's no need to. Here. Okay, they hurt a bit more on, than on normal, I suppose. Science, Do it for science? What? Enough of this. Here. You die for science. Uh, how about that? No? I'm not gonna die for science either then. So. Well, that's a pretty quick run. Talk to Clarissa. Here. Keys please. Thank you. See you. And Gregor has something witty to say. Travel to the Slars Temple. Which is where we want to go for the mapping device. Maramoa. What are you gonna give me? Val, Spirit Shield, Helium Pulse, Opal Wand. So the dagger is actually the best uh, one. Then I, it's the only one that has casting mods that I could also equip. So let's yeah, grab that nervous. one. I mean, as I said, I'm drowning in items right now, but this is not an upgrade. So, boohoo. And everything else I can just uh, sell. Not sure why I picked this one up. Hagen, yes, you want Stay your statues. Game. Okay. Put some stuff away. Did I have to change the bind already? No, I didn't. Oh, that's too bad. That means I need another 10 <laughs> rather than another 9. Uh, let's see. Just to put this in the stuff to be sorted. Uh, this goes into the unique box. Just doing some, some, some runs. Slowly you will build up a uh, small collection of these things. Maps, 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 maps. There. So, this is the third sacrifice at dawn. I think you can also put it in the in the laboratory thing as just a regular map level 60 map i think um i mean i only need one to get i mean i need four different ones to make the map to atsiri which as far as i understand doing atsiri you need to know what it's going to be because it's lethal and only some builds are atsiri viable so yeah let's see i was going to look for this and that. Okay, well, let's uh, let's go onwards. We already explored the area outside of the crematorium, so let's see if we can find a waypoint. Or did that take long enough that the map rerolled? No, it did not. Excellent. Most excellent. So we need to be somewhere to the bottom left for the den of beasts. We might actually encounter it still. You never quite know. Uh, get it. But I'm very pleased that I managed to get my resistances fixed, my energy shield increased a bit. Uh, before delving further into Act 3, it, it definitely, you know, the added security, it helps. It definitely helps. 
Um, I, mean, I really, really don't want to lose this character now that I've gotten so far. Because I... No, I really want to do the mapping. Uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And as far as I understand, there's 77 different base maps and 11 uniques. So, no, got to do them all, right? That went pretty painless. And I don't think I was that far away from Tora, was I? So, you bugs, don't kill yourself on me, please. Or don't try to kill me. Uh, so that's where we have to go, and that's where we have to talk with Tora. Okay. Tora, you're lucky. I'm actually gonna run towards you. Yes, four and a half levels. And if I eventually want to max out all the the masters, uh, might as well respect the missions that are not too much of a bother to do. Tora missions are you know, if you have a den Just and the den is, is I mean, once you find the den. The most difficult bit is, is already solved, and this is a more efficient way to get there. It's th if you have to chase the, the, the monsters all over the map, that's where things get more annoying sometimes. Especially if you find Tora at the end of the level. There's never fun to backtrack. Okay, this is a level uh, 63 area, so that's uh, 6 levels below me. There's a uh, bone spire. Uh, okay, that's gonna be dangerous no matter what level, so be very, very careful. I think it was still up there. Spine snap! Ooh. Yes. Yes, you die. Die, I said. Good. Good monster thing. Here. Full essence drain to the face. That solves that issue. Or oh, chance. I oh, don't find those very often either. Nullifier. Shrapnel shot. That's also one of the new skills, but it's it's a level one skill, so. If I were a ranger, it probably would have dropped for me. I might even be able to buy it. I don't know. Didn't really pay a lot of attention to the bow stuff yet. 2.1 was a really good patch. Lots of new skills. So many skills that I haven't even had a chance to try them all. <laughs> 2.2 is also going to be fun. Uh, if you have seen the, the skill previews already. Earthquake. It's a bit like Ice Crash, but with an actual delay in between hitting the ground and then exploding the ground. And you can only set off one earthquake cooldown at a time so if you hit the ground to actually set off the earthquake you can attack as often as you want but you're not going to spawn multiple earthquakes until the first earthquake has actually struck so that seems interesting as well because with ice crash you can still spam it as a, a standard attack it looks like earthquake you will be able to have as a second skill, like for example with me with Essence Drain and Contagion, no two skill setup. Earthquake probably wants to do that as well. So I'm very curious to see how that all works out. And all the, the, the trap changes, I mean, Cold Trap, uh, the Scatter Trap passive thing. I don't think I've actually played a dedicated trapper, so that might be something to look into as well. Though I am also very, still very interested in trying out uh, Ice Crash Marauder, but not quite sure if I want to do that as a streaming build or just something I'll play for fun and then stream something I haven't done. I mean, I've already done two Ice Crash characters, two Ice Crash duelists even. Uh, 
as a separate series, one for the flashback league and one as a... Uh, before that, uh, in the Dark Shrines. So I've already tried the concept and worked out... I mean, that, that was a dual wielder, of course. It wasn't a, a hammer-wielding standard character. This was uh, special. So I tend to play quirky builds. Now it turns out Contagion Essence Train is no longer a quirky build. It's just as overpowered as heck. But apparently, Bladefall is even more overpowered. But that's something I haven't tried yet. So, let's look for the waypoints. And there, gold is an episode. Uh, there was something very blue. Yes. The Dischargers. You gotta love them. Okay, strong box. Let's uh, clear out some space around it. Hey, and vegan. Oh, I don't want to be near. Uh, this jar just kind of go crazy. Okay. Oh, vegan is in the room next door. Then uh, let's do this first. So, ID. Oh. Okay, I'll clean this room too. See? Nothing. That's just it. Nothing. You didn't see that. Guarded by a stream of monsters. I can deal with that. Set it on fire. There we go. Oh yeah, stream of monsters. Means you need uh, a bit more time to kill them all. Up of regrets. Also not too common. Okay, so Vegan has his own private dual spot. Let's uh, challenge the chap. He's never really much of an issue. But if he has buddies, uh, then it gets a bit trickier. So he leads his life, he's got fast attacks, resists elemental damage and resists chaos. So the, the chaos resist is the annoying bit. For the rest, we'll see. So let's uh, let's begin this. Oof. Bye bye. As I said, vegan usually not an issue with this guy. And the fact that you don't have to chase half uh, the area around looking for a particular monster makes vegan one of my most favorite masters to deal with. I think Fagan and Elrion are my favorites. Just because they are so easy to run. Okay, the Undying Bokage, that means the waypoint's up there. And that means this episode is at an end. So, first steps into Act 3. Only a couple more steps to go. I mean, we made it to the warehouse district, so that leaves the marketplace with sewers. Um... And the battlements, and then we get the Solaris Temple. So, one, two episodes, and then we have reached Lady Diala. And it might be that we have to go towards the docks first to grab the automatic sulfide, to, because solving her quests unlocks the Eternal Laboratory. But I'm not quite sure if it's the quest to find her, or if it's the quest to hand in the, the ribbons pool. I mean, the ribbons pool I always grab on the way there, so that that's, doesn't really count as a separate thing. Might be that that's the thing that actually even, eventually unlocks the eternal laboratory as a, a sign of gratitude, so to say. Uh, but it might be that afterwards I have to go toward, to the docks uh, and get the tomatetic sulfide, even though it's actually part of clearing the blockage down here. So, we'll see. But we are getting closer and closer and closer to the maps. So I thank you very much for watching as always hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye